I thought I'd run through another portfolio. Um, this one was made by one of our students from last year for 2023 entry. Uh, she was applying for BARC programs and uh, with this portfolio she was admitted to Pratt, USC, Northeastern and Carnegie Mellon uh, University. And um, although the Northeastern program is not a BARC program and uh, they do not require a portfolio but it was encouraged anyway so it's good that that was submitted. So I thought I'd give an overview of the portfolio in general but also go into the projects a bit more specifically and talk a bit about what's good to include in an undergraduate architecture school portfolio, um, the kind of projects that you might be thinking about developing, how it relates to your kind of personality, um, and the formatting of it um, for architecture school submissions. Um, and you can get more tips about making portfolios on our website at architecturepreparep.com. Um, and you can also get help with um, making your own portfolio uh, with our tutoring services and our group webinars. So I'll just run through a bit about the formatting before we get into the projects. Um, this is a kind of 20-ish page portfolio um, and it's segmented into 10 projects, which is quite a lot of projects. Um, they were only a few pages each. Sometimes portfolios are just a few projects with um, with lots of pages per project and sometimes they're about uh, a few pages per, per project. Um, depends on the school that you're applying to. Um, the whole portfolio was about this concept of translations and I'll get into that in a second. And so each project was kind of about translations in its own way. Um, and each project begins with a description and a number so that you can tell when you're starting a new project. Um, that's usually in the bottom left as it's done here. And then there'll be a little bit of information about uh, the materials that we use um, and the sort of sizes of things. And uh, in terms of hierarchy, you're basically starting each page with some development work. And then as it sort of progresses, it becomes a little bit more sort of final PC, meaning like you can, you can give um, an entire page to just one or two images. So that's the kind of project uh, hierarchy that you're dealing with, which is important. Um, here's another example of that where we've got some sketch work and then a final kind of painting on this page. Um, so let's go into the projects themselves and then uh, you can get an understanding of uh, the kind of thinking that uh, sort of goes into making a, an architecture school portfolio like this. The entire portfolio is based around one theme and it's always a good idea to kind of consolidate your interests in this way for architecture school portfolios because it makes you sort of become more unique as, a, as an applicant and it allows you to kind of consolidate a personal identity that you can communicate to an, an admissions team. So in this case, we were dealing with the idea of translations. Those were cultural translations, linguistic translations, um, drawing translations, uh, which were basically the kind of backdrop to the overarching application strategy, which was which was to do with translations, but it was also reflected in the written materials, um, in the supplemental essays uh, that that um, that she was submitting to these schools. In the UK, we we have don't have the supplemental essays. We have a personal statement, but the premise is the same. You're linking the two things together. You're linking the visual work with the written work. So each project is a kind of version of a translation. The work from this project was a little complex because it was part of the Cornell pre-college program, so it was inherently quite architectural. Um, but basically, we worked through taking all of the parts from that project and then sort of separating them out into, into development work and into kind of final work and thinking work versus um, sort of investigative work and turning it into a kind of spatial proposal giving a, a kind of nar narrative, basically. Um, so you can see a couple of pages were given far more space than others. For example, uh, this is done full bleed, um, as opposed to like, you know, the next page, which has a, a few more kind of studies to it, which were pushed off to the side. Um, and then, you know, we're starting a new project because we've got our number, project number, and we've got our description in the same place, which begins the project. Um, this was a project about um, translating the kind of um, 
cultural background to this applicant, which was to do with uh, Turkish roots, um, with life in the US, and it kind of manifested it in the design of a of a garment. Um, so, at this point, it, I guess it would be a good idea to bring up that uh, you need to kind of be thinking about a mixed uh, media approach to architecture portfolios. If it's too drawing heavy or too making heavy or too f photography heavy, then there, that bias will be clear. So you, it's it's great that, you know, like the previous project um, was, I, you know, it's, there's a lot of modeling in here, but it is actually quite drawing heavy. And now it's kind of going into like the making of a thing in itself. And that's um, a good range, essentially. Also, it's skilled and it's personal. So that is very important that you're kind of marrying all of those things together. And then the next project, uh, just a drawing project, um, but the drawings are very lovely. And it was a, a project about translating uh, the relationship between human activity and the built environment. So it was quite quite observational and it was done through this um, sketchbook that, uh, that she made um, to document all of those observations in her local area and uh, where she grew up. Um, so again, it's personal and that's important. And now um, we're kind of going into observational translation. So it is absolutely crucial that architecture school portfolios include observational drawn work and they should not be from photographs. And the reason for that is because one of the most important skills for an architect is their ability to translate the world around them into things that sit on a page and also then translate the things that sit on a page into the world around them again. And that dynamic is extremely important in architecture. So it's very clear when you're, when, when you're sort of um, drawing from photographs because you're not actually doing a translation exercise in that case. You're um, basically just emulating what's already been given to you. Um, there's a huge difference between being in a, in a space, looking at a subject and translating it into the world. Um, versus doing it from a photograph. Uh, and that's why they're so keen for you to do all of this observational drawing. Um, that's why schools are so keen for you to do this. So yes, in this case, we were dealing with translating uh, human emotion. How, how can you do that through drawing? Um, translating in a more geometrical, um, constructed way. So this was actually an exercise to do with a type of architectural drawing, which are called constructed perspectives, where you uh, essentially take a, an object <clears throat> and you look at it in, in um, orthographic form, meaning you look at it as if uh, you were looking at it in like Sims, you're looking at it without perspective. And then through a process of linear perspective, you give the object perspective. Um, and then you can kind of uh, understand it three, dimension three dimensionally. Uh, so that was an, an exercise, I guess, for this one. And it was to do with constructing the linear perspective of a, of a chair, of a stool. And then this one was about translating um, the sort of conditions of climate through drawing. So how can you how can you translate heat, for instance? Um, well, I mean, condensation on a glass is one way of doing it. And that's kind of where this particular observational set of drawings went. So always keep drawing. Um, Draw all the time, always carry your sketchbook with you. And um, when you come to making your portfolio, you'll have an endless amount of work that you can then either just take and use in your portfolio or you can develop new projects uh, from them. And then as we get further through the, through the portfolio, it actually becomes a lot more personal. Um, this was about um, her dad's uh, background and her dad's interests. Um, and then the last two projects, so this one uh, was a little bit more sort of symbolic in dealing with this idea of translation, because this this project was about translating the, a, the symbol of technology and the, the, the kind of symbol that technology um, takes up so much attention. What's really quite nice about this is that in the materials listed for this project, it says plane tickets, which is, um, which was important for the concept of this project. Uh, but it it also just, it's just, it, it, the looseness is important. The looseness of, um, you know, I can make a drawing out of graphite and 
paper and uh, I can make a painting out of paint and I can make a sculpture out of clay, but there are also other materials that I can think about to augment my conceptual process to, to projects. Always keep a kind of looseness to the way you work through your projects. Uh, try and keep them, try and be instinctive about them. Think about what, what's important and what's honest and what's sincere in the work. Um, and in this case, what was honest was the, the kind of paraphernalia of traveling, which were plane tickets. So that's a relevant and perfectly you know, great and encouraged medium to use for the making of um, a painting. And you can see those plane tickets are uh, plastered in the background here. And then the last project, this was about um, language. It's quite similar. It's, it's actually a sort of summary of, of the last few projects, uh, this last project, because it's about this, um, the grandmother of the applicant who uh, gave the quote, with every language you speak, you become a new person. And we're kind of dealing with that theme of language more directly now in this project. Um, but also the kind of uh, figure that the figure of the grandma that um, inspired this idea in the first place and, and then using that as a subject for the project. So um, yes, I mean, in terms of translations, we're dealing with language, but it ends up as a painting. And the painting is mixed media, which is great. Uh, it shows a kind of willingness to learn about new media and, and, uh, and work with new media, but also it's a lovely painting to end on. And you've got to remember that if you're submitting this, to school and they're flicking through it and they get to the end, they're going to be sitting on the last image for most of the time because there, there'll be a, you know, a team of admissions, uh, admissions officers who will be looking at your portfolio. And yes, they'll go back through the portfolio. They're not going to be stuck on the end image, but the end image is going to be on the screen probably a little bit longer than the rest of the images, especially if you're uh, presenting your work uh, interview that happens as well you'll get to the end and you'll you'll be stuck on the end for a few you know more seconds longer than normal so make sure your final image is is very lovely basically um, and a kind of summary of what you have been dealing with conceptually in your portfolio um, so that was quite a quick run through I would say um, you know I could talk forever about this kind of stuff um, but basically that's just a summary of a few key points that you can think about uh, when making a, a portfolio. And if you would like more help, um, go to our website at architecturepreparation.com where there's more tips. Um, and you can also get help uh, through our one-to-one -one tutoring. We can help you make a portfolio from scratch or you know just polishing something that you already have. Um, and we can uh, also offer group seminars where you can all get together and um, we can discuss all of these things in far more detail. Um, and you can get going on making a top architecture school application. So um, thanks for watching.